All right, we're taking a look at a starter motor current draw testing machine. This is going to test how much current the starter motor draws when it's free spinning. And that's when it's not attached to the engine, so it's not cranking an engine over, it's not fighting compression or anything like that. So we should pull a relatively lower amount of current than when the starter motor is installed in the vehicle. This test is primarily done when you buy a new starter motor and you're about to install it into a car. So it's a good idea to perform this test if you have this machine. Now if you don't have this, you can perform this test on a bench. The only difference is you're not going to be able to read the current. So that's kind of a big deal. So this is a little bit of an old school machine, but it does work extremely well. So I'm going to go through the process and the procedures today. and I'm going to show you how to install a starter motor onto this assembly, wire it up, perform the test, and get a reading. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these two holes right here and I'm going to mount it directly into this wedge and then onto this shaft right here. So I'm going to use this bottom one. Um, only reason being is because that will give me a cleaner access to my starter solenoid terminals for wiring. Once I got it slid into place, I'm going to use this arm and drop it down into place. Lock it onto the longer shaft coming out of the front. So just snug that up and then tighten down this wing nut. I don't want this like super tight in place but I just want it snug so that it won't move anywhere because starter motors have this tendency to jostle around. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going like to uh, wire up the machine. We have these connectors right here that are part of the machine. Okay. Now the ground connector we can just go to the bare metal. Okay. Just like that because starter motors are case grounded so there's no specific ground wire that you have to go to. So just ground it directly to the case of the bare metal. In this case, the starter motor is held in place by this V-pet uh, pocket. So this is perfectly fine. Next, I'm going to take my power lead. I've got the large terminal. This is going to go onto the battery terminal of my starter solenoid. So it's the larger lug terminal. So just clip that on. Be very careful that this terminal, uh, this connector right here does not touch any bare metal. Okay, because if it does, we're going to have a sparking issue. Now along with this positive connector, we have this pigtail that comes off with this little alligator clip. This is going to go on the S terminal of the starter solenoid. So once I plug it onto this S terminal, now I can energize the starter solenoid, which will then click back, shoot out the pinion gear, and then it will bridge the gap between my battery lug terminal and my motor lug terminal, which is back here. It's kind of hard to see right now, but I'll move the camera around so you can get a better look at it later. All right, next up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug this machine in. So it comes with an electrical cord. Just plug it in. All right, now that i got the starter motor plugged in, we're going to take a look. we got like a whole bunch of stuff going on up here. Things I want to pay attention to is the starter amps, which is going to be displayed on the screen. Okay, since I'm all hooked up, I'm going to go ahead and flick the power on. You're going to notice this comes to life up on top. And this is just a really quick display of current. Nothing major at this point in time, nothing's actually going on. When I hit the starter button, it's going to go ahead and it's going to energize the starter motor and then I'm going to see a real quick kick, a really high amount of current, and then it's going to drop down and level out. Okay? And again, I don't want to turn this on for any longer than five seconds because okay? I don't, my mission is not to destroy the starter motor, it's just to find out if it works and how well it works. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the button and I'm going to hold it for roughly about five seconds. Alright, so we saw up there on the screen that it jumped up to 171 amps and then it fell back to about 81 amps. That's because it takes a lot of current to start the movement. And then once the starter motor starts spinning, the current can then back off. Okay? It's hard to get it working, so hence it uses more current. And then once it starts working, it doesn't need as much current, so then it backs off. So that's exactly what we saw. This is a good starter motor. So 171 amps, get it fired up, back all the way down to 81 amps to maintain. Okay, Easy and simple enough. So now we'll take a look at uh, what's going on with the starter motor when we energize it. Alright, so right here you can see the pinion gear. It's kind of tucked away. Okay? And it should pop out just like that when I engage it. Uh, it's important to keep your hands away from this once you energize the circuit because this has way too much torque for you to get your hands anywhere near it. So I'm going to go ahead and energize it for five seconds. We're going to take a look. Just watch that pinion gear. And uh, it should pop out and spin real quick. So here we go. Perfect. 
So you see, as soon as I energize it, pinion gear pops out, comes into contact with the flywheel, which is what its job is, and then as soon as you let go of that ignition switch, after the engine is started, it retracts and pulls back into the starter motor drive end housing, which is this big aluminum part right here. Okay, easy and simple operation. It's nothing too complex. So the next thing we got to do is disassemble. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove the starter motor off of the entire assembly. In order to do so, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up top. We're going to turn it off. Okay. Once you turn it off, you kill all power to these feed wires right here, and now they're good to disconnect. So start with your positive. Positive cables first, go with your negative cables, tuck them off to the side, loosen up the wing nut, loosen up the arm, pull the starter motor right off of it. Okay, so that's how we bench test the starter motor. Okay, hope this helps out. Take notes, bring them to class, and it's all good. Thanks for watching.